Hey folks, it's Frank here again, coming at you with another video. And this week is a bit special because I am at AI4 here in Las Vegas. I don't know if you can see that little stack of cubes right there. But this week I wanted to talk about data contamination in outlines. And I think this is a bit of a confusing topic and I wanted to really just drive home two specific points about this. The first is that data contamination is not a new problem. I think if you look at machine learning, a lot of how machine learning has been done, quote unquote, traditionally, you have splits, you have a training set, a validation set, and a test set. And during the training and hyperparameter tuning phase, the model never sees any of the data in the test set, ever, right? And that's only to have a very, very fair and balanced evaluation to make sure that we have a model that actually performs once we put it into production. The same thing goes for LLMs as well, right? Same thing goes for data contamination in LLMs. We just need to make sure that the evaluation, the way that we're evaluating the models, the metrics that we're using to evaluate the models, the data that we're using to evaluate the models, has not been a part of the original training data. And I understand that is an easy, that's easier said than done, right? But how do we fix this problem? How do we make sure that this doesn't happen in the future? If you look at, for example, GPT-4, upon release, I think some folks mentioned how on Codeforce's problems, 2021 and before it scored 10 out of 10 and after 2021 it scored zero out of 10 right and the reason again is due to data contamination we have to have very very transparent we have to have a lot of transparency in this the llm training process and that's really what i love about llama 2 you know which i talked about two weeks ago is that they have a great you know, the paper, the technical report that they wrote has a great amount of information, not just about the model architecture, but also about how they train the model in addition to how they perform the evaluation and what data they use to train the model as well, right? I hope a lot of vendors will use Llama 2 as a model moving forward uh, as they move on to evaluate and write technical reports about their own models. So if you like this episode, you know, please hit subscribe below and uh, I'll see you again next week.